Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's American Space, and today we are in P5.js, a programming language, a version of JavaScript. I have been programming some little things and have been very excited about doing that. Uh, I thought you might be interested in seeing what I've been doing uh, and also learning about uh, P5.js in case you want to try programming this language programming language is made for beginners uh, so it's pretty easy to pick up I think I also want to uh, show off this guy Daniel Schiffman the coding train this is where I've been learning how to code and th this guy is really an awesome teacher um, it's no affiliate links or anything this guy's got 1.3 million subscribers so he doesn't need my help uh, he's also got a website so I'm going to link to his stuff, um, and some of the things I'm going to be showing you today are his programs. So this is the pattern maker I made. Uh, this is not something that Daniel Schiffman made. I made this, uh, so I'm pretty happy with it. I don't think I'm going to show you a whole bunch of the code, uh, because you probably won't know what you're looking at, but I might show it a little bit. This part right here is setting things up. You can see it's called function setup. And so creating the canvas is drawing a black uh, background here. And then down here is the draw section and it's uh, giving some randomness to the direction that it's going to be moving in and also randomness in the color. I've got an RGB, so red, green, blue uh, colors. And down here is the points. It's basically drawing one point and then mirroring that one point in three other directions. You might remember long ago that I made a pattern maker in Scrap Mechanic, a couple of them, and I made a pattern maker in GameCraft. So it's fun for me to figure out how to do this in an actual program. And then after I made this, actually just today, I discovered that Daniel Schiffman made a pattern maker that's of course better than mine. Oh, and all of these programs that I'm gonna show you today, I'm gonna to have links in them in the description so you can go to these uh, and run them for yourself. So this is a kaleidoscope uh, snowflake that Daniel Schiffman made. And I'm clicking and dragging with the mouse uh, in order to make the shape. Actually, his was kind of a gray scale and I made it more colored. He's got the symmetry here is uh, right now I've got it set to seven, but I can change this to like four. You see it basically is making four sides to it. If I change it to five, you'll see now it's got five so I can make a star shape. I don't know how far up I can go with this. Let's try 11. There we go. So that's pretty cool. What happens if I do two? Ah, yeah, so this is what I had um, in my pattern maker is with the two lines, or two symmetry, I should say. It might be interesting in Scrap Mechanic if I could take my pattern maker I already have and change the symmetry. Uh, I'll have to see how he did this. Uh, not sure if, if I would do that or not. So I'm gonna share this with you, but if you go look at this, uh, you won't actually be able to change the code right away. You'll just be able to view it and run it. But if you want to change the code, you would sign up for a free user ID with the P5.js website. And then once you're signed in with your user, then you can view this and you can go to File, uh, Duplicate. And once you hit Duplicate, instead of this saying by Steve's Makerspace, it'll say by your name and then you can mess with the code as much as you want. Next, let's look at pattern maker lines. This is one I did myself, and we'll run this. You've probably seen something like this on screensavers before, but it was fun figuring out how to make this work. And I've also got a pause button, so you can click in the canvas area, and, and then uh, it pauses, and then you can click again to unpause it. So this one is changing the color uh, gradually, either minus 15 or plus 15 in the R and the G and the B. And then every time it hits a side, 
uh, besides bouncing back, it also changes speed. Uh, so it winds up going between two and five speed, I guess you would say. And this right here is seeing if it's hitting a wall. So if Y1 is greater than the height, then Y1 direction equals negative Y1 direction. So it basically that's reversing the direction. Next, let's look at an equalizer. This is Daniel Schiffman's thing. Uh, the next several ones are Daniel Schiffman's. So the only thing I did to this is uh, I changed the coloring on it and Funk It Up is uh, something I found on the YouTube audio library. He was using a different piece of music. So you can see this is loading uh, the MP3 file, which is, there's another bit here. Uh, you can see the MP3 file is here. Uh, and then it's finding the amplitude and finding some other information. Uh, and then this down here is basically mapping the frequency and the amplitude uh, to rectangles. So here's, here's some rectangles. You might remember in Scrap Mechanic that I made a Mandelbrot set. I was very uh, happy to do that. Uh, I'm also going to be leaving a link to my playlist of logic and programming, which has a whole bunch of logic and pattern maker things that I'm going to be showing you right now, including this Mandelbrot set. So Daniel Schiffman made the Mandelbrot set, and here it is. His was a grayscale, and I the only thing I did was change the colors uh, to include more colors. And this has it has a slider so that you can zoom in so i this is really cool but i'm all the way in the blue the slider doesn't work great i would like to be able to zoom in better but uh not sure how to do that this is only about 70 lines of code so it's not really that much to be able to make the mandelbrot set i actually uh if you just wanted a black and white mandelbrot set and not have it colored and not have the slider uh it's pretty simple. My Mandelbrot maker in Scrap Mechanic also made the Julia set, and uh, Schiffman also made the Julia set, so here's that. Uh, again, I colored it. His was black and white, and so we'll zoom in, zoom in some more. So that's pretty cool. This is just one part of the Julia set. I made a fractal tree in Scrap Mechanic and also one in Gamecraft. Schiffman made a fractal tree and here it is. Now I added some randomness to it. Let me see. This one, does this have randomness? Yes. So if you wanted to change the randomness, I could put this to zero. And then this tree has no randomness to it. It's just a perfect perfect fractal tree and it's got this slider uh, down here at the bottom um, and so if you want some randomness to it you do that and now you can see it looks a little bit more like a natural tree uh, rather than this perfect tree the last thing is my own invention you may remember in scrap mechanic that I made a spirograph. I made two different spirograph machines. One of them used a screen, and that one uh, I gave you choice of three different curves you could draw. One was a hypotrochoid, one was an epitrochoid, and the third one was Steve's curve because I had accidentally uh, I had made some errors and made my own curve. And then I also made this other spirograph machine that used physical arms. I remember Khan uh, showed that off in a workshop hunters with Scrap Man, so that was cool. So now I've made my spirograph machine in the code. So we'll hit play and you can see that was a type epitrochoid. The spirograph has five different variables that you can change. So here is the hypotrochoid. This is the same variables I have here as I did with the 
uh, epitrochoid. So let me go back to the epitrochoid and you can see it does a different pattern. And then the Steve's curve is type number three. So I'll change it to type number three and you can see another pattern emerges. Let me change one of these or maybe a couple of them. Let's just change this to a four and see what happens. Okay, that's not super interesting. How about if we change this to 2.5? That looks a little more interesting. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And I'm gonna change the variable of the steps. And the steps has to do with the order that it draws things. It ultimately draws the same shape, but the steps uh, draw the pixels in a different order. So if I switch this to step 44 instead of five, you'll see something kind of interesting, I think. And you can see it, it's kind of doing this as it draws. And then if I change the step to 13, you see something different. It starts to make these very slow streaks but eventually it's going to draw the same shape. It's just how it winds up getting there. A, B, and C. So if you had uh, a Spirograph machine as a kid, the toy, there's a center circle and then there's another circle that goes around that circle. Um, and then you can put the pencil in different spots on that circle. So that's what the A, B, and C is, is A is how big is the center circle? B is how big is the circle that's going around that circle, and C is how long the drawing arm is that's attached to that uh, second circle. So there you go, you see it's, it drew the same shape. I've saved some values for the Spirograph machine in here that I think are interesting to try. So here's A, B, C, and S, and which of the types of uh, curves that they work well with. So here's four, 1.25, two, and one, work with all of them. Four, 1.25, two, and one, and we'll see what that does. And let's, uh, let me try stepping that up to, change that to 44. There we go, and then, let me switch this over to the hypotrochoid. See what that looks like. And then the Steve's curve. Ah. Very good. Like I said, if you want to change these variables, you can sign in with your own ID and then duplicate this code so you can mess with the variables. I'll also leave a link to this P5JS website where you can uh, learn all about how to do coding in P5JS. So I think that's going to do it for today. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel, ring the bell for notifications. Comments are always welcome. Uh, let me know also if you want to see more videos about P5JS. Uh, do you want to see me might do some simple coding from start to finish so you can see how it works? Uh, I don't think I'm going to be like trying to teach this code because Daniel Schiffman does it much better than I do. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.